In this video, we're talking about how to find the average rate of change of a function. And in this particular problem, the function we've been given is this function here, f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 5x. And we've been asked to find the average rate of change of this function over the interval x equals 0 to x equals 3. Now, when we talk about average rate of change, basically we're just talking about how fast is the function increasing or decreasing on average over the interval. Now, this is a graph of a function over the interval 0 to 3. It's not the function we're dealing with. It's just some simple function for the purposes of illustrating what we mean by average rate of change. But let's say we want to figure out how fast this function is increasing. Clearly, we can see it's increasing. We want to know approximately how fast it increases on average over the interval 0 to 3. So when we're talking about the interval 0 to 3, like this interval here, what we're saying is this interval from x equals 0 to x equals 3. So on this interval in between these lines here, what we want to do is figure out how fast the function increases on average. The way that we do that is we use this formula here. We'll come back to this formula in a second. But basically all we do is we look at the function's value at the endpoints of the interval. So at the left hand side of the interval here at x equals 0, we can see that the function's value is 1. On the right hand side of the interval here at x equals 3, we can see that the function's value is about 2. If we come over here to the y-axis, we can see that the function's value is about 2. So in order to find the average rate of change of this function, what we want to do is we want to take the value of the function from the right endpoint, this value here, 2, and we want to subtract the function's value from the left endpoint, which is 1. So we just take 2 minus 1, and then we divide that by the endpoints of the interval. And again, we do the right endpoint minus the left endpoint. So we're talking about the interval from 0 to 3. So we want to say 3 minus 0. When we simplify this, 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 0 is 3. So we can say that the average rate of change is 1 third. And you can think about that this way. In order to get from the left endpoint to the right endpoint in this interval, we're going to move over to the right three units. We have to move over to the right three units, 1, 2, 3, like this, and we have to move up one unit. So really, it's just rise over run. How far do we go up or down along the y-axis? Well, we go up one, so that's positive one. So it's basically delta y over delta x, so that's going to be positive one over the change in x. Well, we move to the right three units, so that's positive three, so we get 3 here. So the change in y over the change in x is 1 over 3. So the average rate of change of this function is 1 third. Because on average, y is going to increase 1 unit every time x increases 3 units. Or we can say that the y value here is going to increase by 1 third each time. So up 1 third, up another 1 third, up another 1 third, over 3 units in the x interval, the first unit, the second unit, and the third unit. And we get from our starting point 1 to our ending point so it's basically if we turned our graph, our function, into a straight line, what would the slope of that line be? So that's what we're talking about when we say average rate of change. And again, it's just this formula here. This is the function's value at the right endpoint minus the function's value at the left endpoint, and then the right endpoint minus the left endpoint. So our interval 0 to 3 is actually x sub 1 x sub 2. So when we're finding f of x sub 2, we just plug 3, the right endpoint, x sub 2, into the original function. So we say f of x sub 2 is going to be equal to, and that's just f of 3, so we plug 3 in, 3 to the 4th. Well, 3 to the 4th is 81. And then we have minus 5 times x, or minus 5 times 3, so minus 15. And that's just going to give us 66. Then we want to find f of x sub 1. So f of x sub 1 is the same thing as f of 0, because x sub 1 is 0. So we just plug 0 into the original function. 0 to the fourth is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 0 is just 0. Then here we already know x sub 2 is 3, and x sub 1 is 0. So if we plug these values into our formula, f of x sub 2 is 66 f of x sub 1 is 0, so we say 66 minus 0 in the numerator. In the denominator, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 are the endpoints of our interval, 3 minus 0. And when we simplify, we get 66 over 3, which is the same thing as 22. So here, on average, the y value of the function increases 22 units for every 1 unit that x increases, right? Because we can think of this as 22 over 1, and we can say that this is delta y over 
delta x. So for every unit that we move to the right along the x-axis, we're going to move up along the y-axis 22 units. And just keep in mind that it should make sense that if we get a positive number here, then that means on average that our function is increasing. Just like this function here, it was going up as we move to the right. If we get a negative number, it means our function is decreasing. It's going down as we move to the right. So positive means the function's increasing on average. Negative means the function is decreasing. And the larger the number, right, 22 here is much larger than 1 third. A smaller number means a shallower or a more gradual increase. A larger number means a steeper, faster increase because the average rate of change is larger. So that's how you find the average rate of change of a function.